I wanted to admit one thing. I was expecting something and something else has happened. Chapter 4, this particular verse has four pages of purport. And this is the dream of a Bhagavatam speaker, especially a person like me. <laughs> so that, I, that was one ad advantage I had. And second advantage is, I was told Srivas Krishna Prabhu will be giving class and he's giving the class downstairs. So I was expecting all devotees will be there. So my preparation is minimal. I hope uh, if any, you all can raise some questions. Uh, and one of the things that I wanted to do here is focus a lot on Srila Prabhupada's purports, not just from this verse, but from where we stopped the previous Sunday, text number 21. That is, we have to start from 22 to 29, because some of you, unlike our brahmacharis here, like Mahamani Prabhu and others, they read this Bhagavatam set of verses every day. But you, most of you would probably not be going through the rest of the purports during the week. So I thought I should focus some of the key points of Prabhupada's purports. Very instructive uh, in one sense. And the other reason to do so is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu used to often hear the pastimes of Prahlad Maharaj and Dhruva Maharaj. So it's important that we read Prabhupada's purports as in how much ever possible here. Okay. So let's read the verse. And since it's four pages, Mahamani Prabhu, we are supposed to finish by 9.45. Then, okay, let's try. I'd like to keep a significant portion for devotees to speak so that I, I don't have anything to do. <laughs> and Rasvari Prabhu is nodding there. Very good. We are a family here. It's a small group. We know most of us here. Maitre Uvacha Matu Sapatnya Vakbaner Hridi Vidhas to Tansmaran Naichan Mukti Pater Mukti Muktim Tasma Tapam Upe Ivan Maitre Vacha Matu Sapatnya Vakbane Hridi Vidhas to Tansmaran Naichan Mukti Pater Muktim Tasma Tapam Upe Yivan Maitre Uvacha Matu Sapatnya Vakbane Pradividdhas to Tansmaran Naichan Mukti Pater Muktim Tasma tapam upe ivan. Prabhujis? Maitre uvach. Deva vach. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhu. Pradividdhas tu tansmaran. Mukti pater muktim. Maitre Vacha Matu Sapatnya Vagbane Kudivida Tansmaran Naichan Mukti Pater Muktim Tasmata Matachis Maitre Vacha Matu Sapatnya Vakbane Hridividhas to Tansmaran Naichan Mukti Pater Muktim Tasmathapam Upevang Maitre Uvacha Matu Sapatnya Vakbane Hridividhas to Tansmaran Naicham Mukti Pater Muktim 
Tasma tapam. Word for word meanings. Maitre Uvacha. The great sage Maitreya replied. Matuhu of his mother. Sapatnya of the co-wife. Vak Barney by the echoes of harsh words. Hridi in the heart. With the heart pierced. Tu then. Tan all of them. Smaran remembering. Na not. Aichat desired. Mukti pate from the Lord, whose lotus feet give liberation. Muktim salvation. Tasmad therefore. Tapam grief. Upe yevan he suffered. Translation, Maitreya answered, Dhruva Maharaj's heart, which was pierced by the arrows of the harsh words of his stepmother, was greatly aggrieved. And thus, when he fixed upon his goal of life, he did not forget his misbehavior. He, sorry, he did not forget her misbehavior. He did not demand actual liberation from, the, from this material world. But at the end of his devotional service, when the Supreme Personality of God had appeared before him, he was simply ashamed of the material demands he had in his mind. Translation with repetition. Maitreya answered, Dhruva Maharaja's heart, which was pierced by the arrows of the harsh words of his stepmother, was greatly aggrieved and thus, when he fixed upon his goal of life, he did not forget her misbehavior. He did not demand actual liberation from this material world. But at the end of his devotional service, when the Supreme Personality of Godhead appeared before him, he was simply ashamed of the material demands he had in his mind. So typically we would uh, go with the purport, reading the purport, but this is a four-page purport. I'd like to go like a few sentences at a time, maybe a paragraph at a time. But before we read the purport, uh, I'd like to give a little background of some points which I like, I hope you like, here. So this pastime of Dhruva Maharaj which started like in the previous chapter, the eighth chapter of uh, the Srimad Bhagavatam in the fourth canto, prior to just the starting of this chapter, Maitreya Muni talks about the many sons of Brahma and he describes one of them is Adharma and all his descendants, all the ill-gotten consequences of Adharma. And then he starts describing the descendant of Swayambhuva Manu. Swayambhuva Manu had two sins, Priyavrata and Uttanapada. In Vedic literature, people typically are very respectful of the elder born. But he doesn't describe the pastimes of Priyavrata first. He begins by describing the pastimes, pastimes of Uttanapada because he was eager to narrate the pastimes of Dhruva Maharaj. That's what our Acharyas say. And why, why was he eager to describe the pastimes of Dhruva Maharaj? That's what we, we can go through as we come, come through these set of verses here. The other point that is coming about here is most of you know these pastimes, you've all been coming here for some time. How many of you are very new, totally, like you have not heard the pastime of Dhruva Maharaj at all? Rasveri Gopinath Prabhu, this is the abode of Gandharvika Giridari. Huh? <laughs> okay. 
So anyway, one of the, the I, I, so I see that all of you almost know the past time. One point I'd like to highlight from the previous verses here. In the eighth chapter, when Dhruva Maharaj was aggrieved by the insult of his stepmother and his father not doing anything, his mother, his uh, Suruchi, directed him that you have to make do further tapasya and then be born in my womb. And then when he went to his mother, his mother directed Dhruva to worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Before she directed him to worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the first thing she did was, she herself was aggrieved. She felt insulted. She felt unwanted. Many times we also feel the same. And here is Suniti also feeling unwanted by her husband. She's feeling sad. She is not at the stage of pure devotional service at this point in time. But she directs her son to worship the Supreme Lord. This is the month of book distribution. This is the month of Vaikuntha Ekadashi. When devotees go out and invite others to engage in Krishna consciousness or to at least get an introduction to Krishna consciousness. What happens here is you see Suniti was born in a great lineage. She was having the association of great lineage. Swayam, Bhumanu, Brahma and all of them. Great fam family line lineage. She was not there to be a pure devotee. But she directed her son in the right path. In our preaching movement, Srila Prabhupada often used to say, we want one moon, nacha tara sahasrashaha, eko chandrama nacha tara sahasrashaha. We want one moon, not like thousands of stars. And sometimes, one way of the people interpret it is, I will try to focus my preaching so much that this person is going to chant 16 rounds, he's going to become a great leader and I am going to ensure the number of devotees will increase, the number of bhakti vrikshas will increase, etc. This, while it's a good inspiration, also some neglects an important point. We have to raise the standard of the whole society in such a way that the next generation, possibly, will still go to Krishna. Which means, that we have to be accepting, that we have to accept the fact that some may not come to the level of pure devotion. But the importance is the core philosophical concepts should be known to everybody. If you don't let go of it, then what happens? What will the mothers and the fathers who are not fully Krishna conscious do? They will send their child to other association where they cannot practice it further. I remember that when I was a child, I was studying in a school in which the teachers laid a lot of emphasis on telling shlokas. They were not pure devotees. They were not devotees of Krishna too. But they, had, they gave some connection to Vedic literature. What Suruchi did was much higher. She gave direct connection, sorry, uh, Suniti, I'm sorry. What Suniti did was she did, gave a direct connection to Lord Vishnu. Much better. We need to train our congregation such that even if we don't come to the highest level, do not dilute the philosophical principles. That should be clear. Or, to put it differently, it is not an offense to have material attachments. It is an offense to maintain material attachments. And that's the theme of all these verses that come here. And I'll elaborate further. To add water to it, to add water to the root of the plant of material attachments is something which shouldn't be done. And when will one refrain from doing it? When one knows that these philosophical principles have to be in place. In concept it is there and I am trying to achieve that goal. So that's about the role of culture, especially for mothers, family members, and even fathers too. Um, so having said that, last week we finished at verse number 21. And in verse number 21, Supreme Personality of Godhead said, My dear Dhruva, I shall award you the glowing planet known as the Pole Star, which will continue to exist even after the dissolution in the end of the millennium. No one has ever ruled this planet, which is surrounded by all the solar systems, planets and stars. 
All the luminaries in the sky circumambulate this planet. So Lord Vishnu gives him this benediction. And then he says, After your father goes to the forest and awards you the rule of his kingdom, you will rule continuously the entire world for 36,000 years. And all your senses will continue to be as strong as they are now. You will never become old. So, I'll also tell you, I'll also read the next verse and then we can have a discussion here. The Lord continued, Sometime in the future, your brother Uttama will go hunting in the forest. And while absorbed in hunting, he will be killed. Your stepmother Suruchi, being maddened upon the death of her son, will go to search him out in the forest. But she will be devoured by a forest fire. And so here we are seeing another other aspects what are coming here. One is Dhruva Maharaj had a desire. And the Supreme Lord is giving him more than what his desire is. He is giving him a planet, a spiritual planet, which Srila Prabhupada will speak further in the purport that we are going to read. And that he creates a special planet for Dhruva Maharaj. And he says, before you come there, you will be here for 33,000 years. Sorry, you will rule the kingdom for 33,000 years with full senses. Consciously or unconsciously, we all want something, or I should say most of us want something like that. We want to render devotional service, and at the same time, we want circumstances around us should be so nice. I should never have old age, no Alzheimer's disease, no paralytic stroke, nothing, no diabetes, and I should look young and handsome all the time, and I should be intelligent, my memory should be sharp, when somebody says something, I should understand immediately. I should be able to quote so many shlokas. Whether I am young or old, I should be doing that. These are all our desires. And in one sense, Dhruva Maharaj is getting all of it. But whom, to whom, who gets this? This is obtained by Dhruva Maharaj after he did tapasya, intense tapasya. Our thing is, we don't want to do tapasya. We want to do something here and there and still get the same benediction. So, we are mixed and there is a distinct difference between what is happening in Dhruva Maharaj's case and what we are taught. All the Bhagavatam speakers before me have spoken about this verse again and again and I'll tell, I'll repeat it. The principle that is being elaborated here in this set of pastimes is, Akama sarva kamo va moksha kama udhara dihi tivrena bhakti yogena we can start with full of desires or no desires or being desirous of liberation. But just render devotional service to Krishna. Fine. So Dhruvas is a case where he, we are starting from, where he is starting from full of desires. Fine. The Bhagavatam is saying that the Supreme Lord will purify him. Common question is, I have desires. Let me continue to have desires. And the Supreme Lord will purify me. No. This is what, from the philosophical standpoint, Dhruva did was one way of doing it. But Rupa Goswami doesn't teach us this. Rupa Goswami holds us to a much higher standard. Rupa Goswami's standard is Anyabilashita Shunyam Jnana Karma Dhyanavritam. He says, do not even think about fulfilling material desires. It is, or even the desire for liberation. No. Our desire should be Anya Abhilashita Shunyam Kyana Karma Dhyanavatam Anu Kuliyana Krishna Anu Sevanam Serve Krishna in the footsteps of those who are already serving him, not the way I want. So there is a difference. So here we see in the Bhagavatam a spectrum of services and Rupa Goswami wants us to go to the higher stage. But what happens if we do like this? And that's where Srila Prabhupada expands in the purport, in the next, in the second verse that I read here. Srila Prabhupada writes, An offense at the lotus feet of a Vaishnava is the greatest offense in this world. Because of having insulted Dhruva Maharaj, Suruchi would become mad upon the death of her son and would enter a forest fire and thus her life would be ended. 
So Suruchi, when, when, when Suruchi insulted Dhruva, he was not a pure devotee. And then he becomes a pure devotee and the Supreme Lord takes it seriously. So in one sense, it is very imperative that whether somebody is a devotee or not, one should refrain from causing mental anguish and insult to others. It's very important. That, that's what Srila Prabhupada is bringing us. And it is not easy. Just an anecdote. Uh, at my workplace, I have a change, I, had, I recently had a change in the boss. There's a guy who came all the way from US, worked there for 18 years or so, and then he's, used, he's, he's been a career manager in the sense that for the past eight years, all he's been doing is just management. So, you know, there's a saying in management, the best manager is a person who doesn't know what the work entails. Because if you know how much the work entails, you will feel mercy for the other person and say, okay, take more time. The best manager is one who tells, I don't care how you do it, get it done by this time. I mean, it's, I'm not saying it from an absolute standpoint, I'm just like a joke. So he is, belongs to one of that category. He doesn't think about how much time. He said, I need you to get it done in this time. And one of the things that happened is, when people do not, when people are unable to do anything in that time, he started insulting people left, right and center in front of everybody. Typically, in a corporate world, what to speak of devotional circles, nobody insults another person in front of others. If anything has to be taken, it's in a closed room and they talk to each other. So he started insulting people left, right and center. And I initially was a person who thought, come on, how, how hopeless he is. And after being with him for a month's time, as I observed, I too was falling into the same trap. I was about to enter into uh, speaking ill of others and insulting them, etc. So this word, the nature of this world is such that our association is such that we will be dragged down like anything. First and foremost is we shouldn't do it to others. Even if we refrain from doing it, insulting others becomes very, comes natural because of our association. That is something that we should be very, very careful of. Krishna is a great trickster. The more we find faults in others, he will ensure that we will one day have the very same challenge. Now, so what to do then? You don't find faults? Many of you here are heads of services. There is an art to it. And the art to it is, before we go and say to somebody that this is a mistake, Internally, we should cultivate the habit that this is the value that this devotee has. Let me help him to improve. If within our heart we begin to meditate on the faults of others, our fall down is imminent. Not, I mean, that is guaranteed. So it's very imperative that as managers, we never bring down the level of Krishna consciousness of others. If anything, we have to raise it to a higher standard. That's, that's a challenge that we have. The next verse, text number 24, the Lord continued, I am the heart of all sacrifices. You will be able to perform many great sacrifices and also give great charities. In this way, you will be able to enjoy the blessings of material happiness in this life and at the time of your death, you will be able to remember me. So, I'd like to focus on a few words here and a few uh, excerpts from Srila Prabhupada's purport. The first thing the Supreme Lord says in this verse here is, I am the heart of all sacrifices. Ishtva maam yagnya hridayam. What is the meaning of the Lord being the heart of all sacrifices? Which means when a sacrifice is done, our heart should be on Him. And that's the first thing we typically forget when doing a sacrifice. Because we are in the doership mentality. When we go out for book distribution, when we do our service for Vaikuntha Ekadashi or any of the Ekadashis, when we expect a lot of people, our mind gets into getting things done. But along with it, what is important is the heart of how will the Supreme Lord be pleased. It is not easy. We have to calibrate our mind and bring it back. 
how can krishna be pleased how can devotees be pleased and connecting ourselves to this is what i heard in the lecture or this is what i read in shila prabhupas purports and this is how it is being manifested while i am doing the service and while i am interacting with others that is an important point here if you don't do that then the heart of the sacrifice itself is gone then the purification doesn't happen so easily when krishna is removed from the heart of the sacrifice purification happens by the school of hard knocks we learn by mistakes when krishna is within the heart of the sacrifice or when our consciousness is that how can krishna be pleased or how can my spiritual master be pleased how can i help this devotee then the way krishna's mercy operates is totally different very different and it is sweet so shri prabhupada writes the result of whatever we do in executing spiritual activities is successful if we can remember narayana the supreme personality of godhead and then he says fine you have to remember and then there is an important thing this program of constant remembrance can be disturbed by many things but dhruva maharaja's life would be so pure as assured by the lord himself that dhruva would never forget him so this remembrance of the supreme lord is not an easy thing and why is it not easy in the bhagavad gita krishna says bhogaishwarya prasakta nam taya apakrita chetasam vivasyatmika buddhihi samadhau na vidhiyate when our mind and our consciousness is filled with bhoga and aishwarya how i can enjoy and how i can have opulence taya apakrita apakrita is like my senses are bewildered it is robbed by that then the a single pointed determination to serve krishna does not occur conversely if we cultivate if we keep on cultivating material desires that will not happen how we chant depends upon our consciousness during the day and our consciousness during the day depends upon how much we can sacrifice our mind during chanting we have to sacrifice all our desires i mean it, it it's so common for us that we we take a face we took we take a phone and then keep on looking at what to do and then chant for 2 minutes chant look at the phone for 1 minute why why do we have to do that are we not thinking that krishna is in control is everything going to be lost if we lo- let go of our phone for a few seconds or a few minutes the sacrifice that krishna has or Ch- chaitanya mahaprabhu has given us in this age is a sacrifice first sacrifice your time there is only so much time that you have in that do something for me in the chaitanya charitamrita actually i think it's the chaitanya bhagavat in the chaitanya bhagavat uh it's written that when mahaprabhu was there in puri everybody would invite him to have prasadam and one of them was advaita acharya and like that several others would invite him to honor pr- prasadam some of them would cook at home some would buy prasadam from the temple in puri and then serve not just mahaprabhu but all his sanyasi associates paramananda puri and others and once mahaprabhu said i will not eat prasadam from the house of a person who is not a lakshyeshwara who is a lakshyeshwara a lakshyeshwara laksha is 1 lakh a, a, a person who is the lord of 1 lakh and who is a lord of 1 lakh like somebody has 1 lakh rupees today itself 1 uh, lakh is a big amount in those days it was even a further big amount and then mahaprabhu clarified lakshyeshwara is a person who chants 1 lakh holy names every day what does one lakh holy name mean if you do the math it comes to somewhere around 58 rounds of the hare krishna maha mantra and if you do that math further it means like at, at least like 6 hours 6 and a half 7 hours of time that is spent in chanting mahaprabhu wants us to spend time with him spend time in chanting the holy name as much as possible and that is our purification so even whatever we offer as bhoga to the supreme lord it comes out as prasadam when we chant in the right mood shila prabhupad made it simple from 58 rounds he has brought it down to 16 rounds that's okay we can do it but that it means that mahaprabhu wants us to spend time and let go of 
this this kalmasha this impurity that is there in our heart that is when when you spend time with a person then you establish relationship with the person otherwise we don't establish that relationship then shila prabhupada writes in the purport before dhruva's death he would enjoy this material world not by sense gratification but by performing great sacrifices um it is assured here that dhruva maharaj would be able to perform such activities in the age of kali however the great sacrifice is the performance of sankirtana yagna so shila prabhupada writes that the sacrifice that dhruva maharaj did by performing so many sacrifices that is equivalently done by the the congregational chanting and hearing of krishna's names and we're distributing it to everybody else now when we take sankirtana when during this month of book distribution what we do sometimes is we go and give a book to people outside we focus on give sometimes we end up focusing on giving a bhagavad gita getting so many books points etc what we need to do here is bring krishna in the life of devotees and make arrangements for krishna presence to be there continuously which means probably that we take his contact connect him to him or her to somebody else and else there are people who may not uh take a book but at least let them hear the vibrations of the holy name so that's why in some places in the world the way people do the book distribution is there is a sankirtan happening there is a singing there is a dancing of singing of the holy names there's a dancing that is happening and along with it there is a distribution of the books so that people may get attracted to something and even some packets of prasadam being given people when we what we are doing here is we are sacrificing our time in which we could be earning more we could be enjoying with our family members go to a movie or blah 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 do all that stuff we are saying to our mind no not this but mahaprabhu that is our sacrifice we are doing the next level of sacrifice i'm doing is i can be so absorbed in my mind of thinking my own problems but when i go out for sankirtan or when i chant i'll say ditch this mind this mind will be there always now is krishna this is time for krishna that is our sacrifice and then krishna can reciprocate in various ways that we are thinking it's no longer about me it is about the other person and when we do that krishna gets pleased but how to do it in shila prabhupada writes our krishna conscious movement sorry our krishna consciousness movement is designed to teach people and then he writes in brackets and to learn ourselves the exact instruction of the personality of godhead so the important thing here is don't just go out and distribute books we also have to read the books prior to going out which means something like which uh, vaisheshika prabhu and others do is we have every sunday people read excerpts of the books that they are going to distribute and then they say these are the highlights i like from these books and they try to apply they share it with others so that they say this is what i like and i think this is how i am thinking of telling people you share amongst each other how it applies to your life how it will apply to them you share strategies and then we follow shila prabhupada's instructions we are distributing books for shila prabhupada not for scoring some points for our own selves and then shila prabhupada also writes in this age distribution of prasada has replaced distribution of money no one has sufficient money to distribute but if we distribute krishna prasada as far as possible this is more valuable than the distribution of money in our movement sometimes we think that a great devotee is one who can quote so many verses give classes etc but it is also important that we give krishna's mercy to others in all possible ways a devotee who just goes to the kitchen to cook thinking that let me be an instrument to give krishna's mercy to others is if not more at least as equally valuable as a person who sits on the vyasasana and gives class we should all come to the stage where we work together to cook bhoga for krishna and then give it as prasadam offer it to him and then give it as prasadam to everybody else we should not be relying on third party cooks etc it is easy to do so 
but it but that sacrifice is something which krishna will appreciate next verse number 25 the personality of god had continued my dear dhruva after your material life in this body you will go to my planet which is always offered obeisances by the residents of all other planetary systems it is situated above the planets of the seven rishis and having gone there you will never have to come back again to this material world shri prabhupada writes therefore dhruva loka or the pole star is the abode of lord vishnu within this material world upon it there is an ocean of milk and within that ocean there is an island known as shweta dwipa it is clearly indicated that this planet is situated above the plan, plan, seven planetary systems of the rishis and because this planet is vishnu loka it is worshiped by all other planetary systems so it is not that this dhruva this pole star was not there before dhruva became perfect it existed but the he, after this after dhruva's austerities dhruva became the adipati for this so this is the extent to which krishna does something for us in all our lives krishna is doing something special he is doing something magical he is giving us more than what we need our problem is we don't recognize it 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 we it for us it may not be a pole star it may be a devotee coming and reminding us of something it may be that something is happening between two devotees and we are observers of what is happening it is an instruction for us look you do something more this is what is going to happen to you or you want to go higher look at it this is what you should be doing all these arrangements are being done by krishna for us it is up to us how we take it he's doing more than what's necessary for us i have one other point related to it but when we come to the verse i'll say that there so then the great sage maitreya said after being worshiped and honored by the boy dhruva maharaj and after offering him his abode lord vishnu on the back of garuda returned to his abode despite having achieved the desired result of his determination by worshiping the lotus feet of lord dhruva maharaj was not very pleased thus he returned to his own home and then vidura inquired how is it he got everything and then he was still dissatisfied that is when we come to this verse so now so far we came to the the prologue the background for this verse and now we'll come to the purport for shila prabhupad four pages only 945 now 10 o'clock we have to close so let's see that in the purport shila prabhupad writes first this important verse has been discussed by many stalwart commentators and then shila prabhupad writes why was dhruva maharaj not very pleased even after achieving the goal of life he desired a pure devotee is always free from any kind of material desires so a pause here shila prabhupad writes this a long purport because he has adapted the commentary from several acharyas and he is being saying that okay dhruva maharaj was not pleased and why was he not pleased because dhruva maharaj had asked something from a, had his desire for something on a material platform and so shila prabhupad contrasts this immediately to a pure devotee and shila prabhupad gives the definition of a pure devotee a pure devotee is always free from any kind of material desires so this is one point that i thought i'll share with all of you i have observed this and you all can correct me many of you are very senior to me here no, not necessarily by age uh not necessarily by number of years but by your realizations and by your seriousness in your practice please do feel free to tell me this at the end of this class i find a trend here that people understand chaitanya charitamrita's statement of diksha guru and shiksha guru in a particular way diksha guru is one who gives initiation shiksha guru is one from whom i take instructions so quite often when we are in a very in one sense a hierarchical setup of temple 
circles, sectors, bhakti vriksha, etc. The bhakti vriksha leader, sometimes people very loosely say, he is my shiksha guru. Or uh, the circle servant, he is my shiksha guru. It is not a joke to be a shiksha guru. A shiksha guru is a pure devotee free from any kind of material desires. Almost at the same level. And you cannot just say, he is my guru. You have to, that, that guru also has to accept us. So, for most of us, we have Srila Prabhupada, who is giving us Shiksha. He is the Shiksha Guru. We have a spiritual master, either from whom we are aspiring to take initiation or we have received initiation. He is our primary Shiksha Guru. Anybody else that you take, ideally, if you are, if you are taking Shiksha from somebody else, he should be authorized by the Diksha Guru. Or, like in some cases, we have our spiritual masters, God brothers. If we are getting attracted to receiving initiation or receiving shiksha from him, we should write to our spiritual master saying, I am getting attracted to his teachings. I would like to hear them and follow them in my, my life. Can I have your permission? The point I was telling is something much on the other side. I may be sitting on this Vyasasan seat, but if somebody calls me a Shiksha Guru, it is, not, it is my responsibility to tell them I am not at the level of Shiksha Guru, because I know where I am. We are all, all of us who are these, who have been, um, who have the fortune of being an instrument in Mahaprabhu's movement, most of us are at the level of Pata Pradarshaka Guru or Vartama Pradarshaka Gurus. We are giving some Shiksha, but Shiksha Guru is a very big role. A Shiksha Guru is a pure devotee, period. Therefore, know clearly who is a Shiksha Guru. So, once we accept somebody as Shiksha Guru, it also means what he says, I try to follow to the level best of my capability. Not that I go and meet him whenever I want and say, Prabhu, I'm, I want to get married. I need your blessings. Please bless me that uh, I'm going to choose this girl. Uh, and uh, you tell me, you bless me, it's okay to do so. No. We first go and tell him that this is my nature. You please tell me what I should do. That is what a Shiksha Guru is meant to be. That we ask him or her what uh, I should do. We have to be a Kinkara. Kinkara or servant means Kinkara. What should I do? How can I serve you? That's the mood that should be there. So, that's the point I wanted to bring about pure devotee here. And then Srila Prabhupada writes, in contrast to this pure devotee, there is the other side. In the material world, one's material desires are all most demoniac. One thinks of others as one's enemies. One thinks of revenge against one's enemies. One aspires to become the topmost leader or topmost person in this material world. And thus, one competes with all others. And this has been described in the Bhagavad Gita 16th chapter as Asurik. So if you look at the Bhagavad Gita chapter 16, I would like to just read the very same, uh, what you call, translation which Srila Prabhupada has given. I know by paraphrasing, but I would like to say what Srila Prabhupada has written. The demoniac person thinks, so much wealth do I have today and I will gain more according to my schemes. So much is mine now and it will increase in the future more and more. He is my enemy and I have killed him and my other enemies will also be killed. I am the lord of everything. I am the enjoyer. I am perfect, powerful and happy. I am the richest man surrounded by aristocratic relatives. There is none so powerful and happy as I am. I shall perform sacrifices, I shall give some charity, and thus I shall rejoice in this way. Such persons are deluded by ignorance. The point that is coming up here is, while we cultivate devotional service, do not cultivate the weeds of material desire. Do not cultivate the weeds of Ishwara Bhava, trying to be the Lord. That is not what Krishna likes us to be. That's not what Krishna wants us to be. So it is, a, it is actually an addiction. We all have various addictions. One and the prominent addiction is this addiction for sense enjoyment and controllership. Very tough to go. Very tough. 
but at least conceptually we should be clear i shouldn't be pursuing this many times people think why has krishna not allowed me to enjoy it would have been nice you know like uh, why why can't i not enjoy so little for him little for me that's okay no if you want to do that don't get into devotional service krishna has given provision for it he has given this material world and if you are not satisfied with this go to patal loka go to atala vitala sutala talatala rasatala patala amazing worlds here you will have to study engineering and then you will have to think about how to construct a mansion you have to build ac and then you will have to have the uh, nice air purifier and all that stuff to enjoy there by your subtle powers itself you can immediately manifest everything this is not the world for you go there and the problem is the more we chant and keep our desires we are just taking our visa to go to patal loka that's it and then in some we hear from bhagavatam where some of the residents of other lokas are so eager to come here because they have wasted an opportunity that what what we got here this life is not to be wasted we don't know after this what is going to happen it is rather better that we focus right now on our devotional practices so then comes the problem which most of our other practicing devotees have and i'll i'll just write read from prabhupada's purport here a pure devotee has no demand from the lord his only concern is to serve the lord sincerely and seriously and is not at all concerned about what will happen in the future in the mukundamala stotra king kulashekara states my dear lord i don't want any position of sense gratification within this material world i simply want to engage in your service perpetually similarly lord chaitanya and shikshashtaka also prayed my dear lord i do not want any amount of wealth material wealth i do not want any number of materialistic followers na dhanam na janam na sundarim kavitam va jagadish kamaye mama janmani janmanishware bhavatad bhaktir ahaitu ki tvai which verse in the which what is the verse number of this in the shikshashtaka anybody four for most of us we are in verse number 2 we are ha nam nam akari bahudha nij sarva shakti tatra arpita niyamitah smarane na kalah etadrishi tava kripa bhagavan murari mama jan ha nidur daivam idrisham ihajani na anuragah we are at the stage of na anuragah we are at the stage of not having the taste for the holy name and mahaprabhu is asking us leave everything and go to krishna and this is where the dichotomy happens to this for most people in this world should i leave everything and go to krishna or should i just focus on this chanting here we have like 5 minutes and i i want to say something here two points Number 1 Shri Prabhupada has given a very clear instruction for us and that's there in the introduction to Bhagavad Gita In your heart cherish this principle into the world outside appear as if you are an attached person do your duties so that you can preserve your body and soul but from our heart my shelter is not in trying to uh make my material life comfortable we all may have a job we may have our children we all have family duties we do it thinking that let me bring krishna into the lives of others if at least for the least i should be able to preserve my body and soul together so that i can practice devotional service but our shelter is not there so while i was discussing this one devotee told me i had a very interesting question the devotee's question is which some of you may also share with and even i shared it for a long time in my devotional life how can i know i am progressing what are the steps in devotional service that i should be taking see in my school life lk i went from lkg to ukg first standard second standard i did went all the way to whatever some graduate degree at every in every degree or every stage i had you have to learn this is the syllabus you learn the syllabus properly 
get 10 out of 100, 35 out of 100, 100 out of 100. You should know the answers to so many questions. First standard, you know addition. Second standard, you know multiplication. Third standard, you know division. If you know division of three digit numbers, you are cleared third standard. But in devotional life, it doesn't seem anything like that. What, how can I say this? He says, does it mean that I have to first finish Shraddha, then after Shraddha, uh, sorry. He said, okay, I understand Shraddha is there from beginning to end. First is Sadhu Sangha, then I finish Bhajana Kriya, then I finish Anartha Nivritti, and then it is Nishta, Ruchi, etc., one by one. But I understand I am in the stage of Anartha Nivritti, but how do I know what has been done? Any comments from devotees here? Anybody would like to say anything? This is the question which a devotee posed to me. What your fellow devotees know about you is know you can know how much you have progressed. Nice answer. Any other thing? And any? Huh? Huh, he needs numbers. See, how material desires are decreasing. How do I know? Today I am I at 10%. If I know I am at 10%, I know I have to get 90% more marks. I will try. See, when will I try for 90% more marks? When I know I am at 10%. Or I mean like I'm 10 marks or so. Huh. Huh, but I, where, are the, where is the number coming? Huh. Okay. 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 So Na Nagaraj Prabhu is saying? The amount of time I gave for the devotional service is the quantification. How much I willingly give it and I'm attracted to give that uh, portion of time for devotional service. From the Mataji side, I'll come to you. Anybody from the Mataji side? Yes, Nidhima Mataji. Very nice point. Number of instructions that we are willing to follow from the spiritual master. Okay? Revati Mataji. Number of sacrifices we are doing, okay? Malik Arjun Prabhu. Number of times we d our mind deviates from chanting. Okay, okay. Thank you for your reply. And this is my thought which I'd like our senior devotees to correct me, either now or later. Huh? Yeah, come, please come here. The question is, one devotee said, how how can you tell me whether I am progressing? I am used to marks system, 10 marks, 20 marks, 50 marks, 100, uh, out of 100. But in our devotional life, I am never getting to know how much. If I know I am at 20 marks, I will try to at least get 35 marks. I know I should get 15 more marks to pass. I should get another 140 marks to get distinction. Something like that I will get. But I am unable to know. I am, continue, I am continuously endeavoring and it looks like there is no end to it. So it means I have to always do service. Where is the end? When will I know I have got there? Mera degree kab mila? That is the question. Okay. So, one of the problems in posing this question is we are bringing our material mindset to spiritual dimension. Look at it this way. You have a block of rock. We have to carve, not a block of rock, it's a, there's a, there are some rocks which are living rocks from which we carve deities. So you get a stone of marble, etc. You'll have to chisel out continuously, and then you get the form of the deity. And then you'll have to come have a pure devotee who invites the deity to come and reside in that, etc. We are actually at that, we are our devotional service at various stages in the rock here. There are, it is a hard piece here, there's a hard piece there. This has to be chiseled, that has to be chiseled. And the problem is, the way I am being chiseled is being different from the way it is being chiseled for some other devotee. Two people, it is very different. And we are looking at, give me a quantification. Ten places where the, it is not being chiseled properly, hundred places where it is not being chiseled properly. It doesn't work that way at all in devotional service. Why? Because this chiseling of this rock to form a nice deity as such, or how he comes into our heart, 
depends upon love here it is about how much from my heart i can put my consciousness on pleasing krishna it doesn't work this way so our problem is we are there will never be an end to how much we can please krishna the chiseling is done by krishna it is not done by us our thing is what all we can do to make krishna happy and then krishna will carve the rock in such a nice way that that rock will become a deity who will be enshrined in our heart right so it's a non linear thing that's that's the that's the problem that's happening here we expect linearity and it it doesn't work that way some like for example there is one like carving the nose of the deity it takes a lot of time but just because it takes a lot of time it doesn't mean that it is unfinished and we start thinking how much more time should i spend in this that i am not getting any taste here no probably the rest of the body is done it is this small portion which will take more time fine but the rest of the body is done for somebody else he will be thinking the nose is not cleared but this rock oh the leg was done the hands are done we are looking at others the leg is done the hand is done the face is done we are not looking at the subtle details the subtle details take a lot of time and it can be done very quickly too provided all that the devotees here said are followed the number of instructions that we receive that we follow how much sacrifices are we able to do these are the ones which speed up the process but if you are looking at markers these markers may not be so important or we may not be able to get it so easily so as mahamani prabhu mahamani madhav prabhu said the feedback which others are giving us help us and that is why it is important to work amongst the devotees and to have a healthy relationship with devotees we cannot always be like prabhu prabhu you are great we should have a relationship of friendship amongst us so that the other person can tell hey i think you did this but maybe it could have been done in a different way this is very different from the insulting thing which we discussed in the beginning which suruchi she insulted and she finally lost her mind we shouldn't insult devotees that way our mood should be how to help so it's 105 and out of the four pages of purport we have finished 3/4 so i think we have to stop here correct ha huh? 5 minutes ha huh? you'll cancel okay so one other p- point here in this verse maitreya replied to vidura that dhruva maharaj influenced by a revengeful attitude towards his insulting stepmother did not think of mukti nor did he know what mukti was therefore he failed to aim for mukti as his goal in life but a pure devotee also does not want liberation his soul completely surrendered to the supreme lord and he does not demand anything from the lord this position was realized by dhruva maharaj when he saw the supreme personality of godhead present personally before him because he was elevated to the vasudeva platform the vasudeva platform refers to the stage at which material contamination is conspicuous by absence only or in other words where there is no question of the material modes of nature goodness passion and ignorance and one can therefore see the supreme personality of godhead because on the vasudeva platform one can see god face to face the lord is called vasudeva yeah vasudeva prabhu here so it is only on the purified platform that we can see the lord face to face and sometimes there is also a misconception going on when a husband does something wife gets some 50% 75% of it so therefore wife can be as he or she i mean or wife wife can be as she is and she will get the benefits out of what her husband does this is not the path of ritualistic sacrifices uh jiva goswami don't you no i'm sorry rupa goswami the nectar of devotion says nobody can enter into devotional service unless and until they have already had some prior contact with devotional service it may start out as some sukriti by helping some other devotees etc but then 
one ha one can the, the limit to which one can progress depends upon how much one has invested one's heart if i am an assistant to somebody it's great it gives me sukriti but it does not take me all the way back to godhead krishna wants us to go there and more than krishna our spiritual master wants us to go there if we have a relationship with our spiritual master or the devotees who are guiding us at least for their sake do whatever it takes to go there it does not matter whether it's one is in a man's body or a woman's body we get to go to the supreme lord by holding on to their cloth in we we need their mercy but finally our desire to go there should also be there we cannot go just by saying he will take me there he will take us but he is also giving us the instruction you desire you do the sacrifice for the supreme lord you should inculcate within you the uh, the ability to please krishna and the inculcate the habit of remembering krishna and wanting to make him happy inculcate that bhakti is a cultivation if we don't do that how can we go back to krishna therefore whether one is a man or a woman one has to do this not just saying my husband will do my wife will do i will get 50% of their credits you can get that credit it only guarantees next life you will be having a association of devotees what you do with it again depends on where your mental state is at that point in time right most of us were probably very fortunate that somehow we were in contact with devotees in our past birth and again we have come here let us not stop there it is easy to start at a point and come to a level but to go to the next level requires a push and that push has to be partially self driven partially we should expect it from others so when we get correction from devotees we should understand this is the best thing that is happening in my life i am unable to progress on my own somebody is pushing me and the best correction is done by a person who is junior to us very nicely it will be taken care then one excerpt from the purport shila prabhupad writes the supreme personality of god had is so affectionate and kind towards devotee especially to a devotee like dhruva maharaj who went to render devotional service in the forest alone at the age of only 5 years that although the motive might be impure the lord does not concern, consider the motive he is concerned with the service so this is our instruction to this is an instruction for us of how we have to tolerate others we see people rendering service with various motives and we may get agitated by that they may want some, to expect something in return they may they may do it superficially in one way and we may easily be able to see this is the reason he is doing that service he wants something like this which is not right but although the motive might be impure we have to see in spite of this impure impure motive this devotee is rendering this service if at all we are all trying to be representatives or trying to give the mercy of the supreme lord to others we should carry his mood <coughs> and then shila prabhupad writes supreme lord does not leave the devotee's material desires unfulfilled <coughs> these are some of the special favors by the lord to a devotee in in the seventh canto of shrimad bhagavatam there is a verse which states if if a one way to to satiate the material desires of a person is to actually enjoy a lot it is just like when there is a blazing fire you put ghee but not just put little ghee put a lot of ghee such that the fire is doused off there is a verse to that effect in the 7th canto of shrimad bhagavatam rasuyari prabhu you remember that verse so so that that is one kind of weight in which that desire can be ful fulfilled that is i mean like no more desires you enjoy a lot but is it for everybody no it is only for a special few and that is why the supreme lord chooses that kind of people who are ready that he gives them a lot he fulfills their desires and it is at that stage in life when they say done but for the vast majority of us we should not get get into it right so this kind of extreme fulfillment of desire should not be done voluntarily 
it should be done if 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 at all it comes then it, we should understand that oh the supreme lord is trying to make me happy in this situation like most of us we are all working class men we get some money we we can eat what we want we can cook what we want we can offer it and then still get it all that is possible but should we limit ourselves to that no we should say that my desire for this is done now let me see krishna senses should be happy satisfied we should come to that level before i proceed further there's one two other sections of this that i want but any further comments or questions i can pass the microphone to people huh hmm he does not leave that he he the super, he does not leave the devotee's material desires unfulfilled yes exactly exactly it is very risky to have a material desire it will get fulfilled and when it gets fulfilled we don't know where our mind will take us to and then we are can stray away from the path exactly that's a problem that's a problem any comment tarak prabhu that you'd like to say i mean you uh, you can give your own realizations on this too that that's what i'm looking for these devotees have come on a sunday morning so that they can hear the realizations of the devotees anything that you like to share okay huh. dro maharaj hmm hmm initially dro maharaj started in a passionate mood sometimes we also get into that later we find feel that it is not supposed to be and it happens regularly yeah how to get rid of it we know it's not good but how to do it i think you know the answer but you're raising it for everybody else um you know damping damping so uh he's a mechanical slash structural engineer kind of a thing so there's something called a wave which is called a damping wave like a wave goes up and down and if you damp it the next time it goes up and down will not be so much little the next time it will be even little 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 and then finally it will come to like a straight line so this is how things work by our devotional service our goal should be that at least my level of unwanted passion that i bring for my own glorification etc or things like that that keeps on decreasing the purifying factor is just like what happened to dro maharaj devotional service krishna purified dhruva of his passion we cannot purify ourselves the supreme lord does and how he does it through the medium of the holy name and service it will happen and we have to recognize it we have to be open to it that's it one other thing that can help us in this passionate exercise is uh come up with your plans for a year or 6 months 2 year 2 months something like that and share it to the devotee who you think can monitor you and then have like a retrospective in retrospect i try to do this and this is what happened most likely the devotee will be able to point out this is where you went became passionate that's the thing here that uh, either it comes naturally or somebody tells us any other comment yes prabhu hari krishna uh, so in the translation uh, prabhupada is mentioning the end of the devotional service 
so is it the Vasudeva platform that you have discussed in the purport that Prabhupada is mentioning, where one has to come out like uh, like one has to uh, out of be out of the modes of metal nature that is goodness, passion, and ignorance. So is this the like uh, thing that is mentioned end of the devotional service where we uh, where one devotee sees the Lord face to face? Or it is something different that Prabhupada uh, is mentioning when we it's mentioning end of devotional service. End of devotional service that Prabhupada is mentioning. So actually we discussed there is no end to devotional service. <laughs> so is it the Vasudeva platform which is uh, like uh, out of mode of ignorance, like uh, goodness, passion and ignorance. Is it the same or it is uh, something else? Here, when Srila Prabhupada writes the end of devotional service, uh, this is just for the end of his tapasya. It is just, it, as you said rightly, there is no end to devotional service. So, in our, for our condition, it is only when we come to the stage of prema that we come fully out of the modes of material nature. That much is very clearly given to us. Rupa Goswami's teachings clearly tell us that part. So, uh, we, for us it is going to happen only at that point in time. And Dhruva Maharaj, he did his few months of devotional service and he, all, he came to the stage of bhava there. So that's it. Is, is that, was that your question or did I not hear clearly? Something missing? Okay. Anything from the Matajis? And okay, okay. I'll. I just want to write, tell one more thing from this purport here. One last thing from the purport. Very nicely written by Shila Prabhupada. Sense gratification means domination over material nature. The whole competition between conditioned souls is based upon domination of this material nature. So the more we are trying to be in control of material nature, material nature also means my body, my youth, my energy, people around me, the circumstances around me, my house, etc. The more we expect that control, that is sense gratification. Very nicely written by Srila Prabhupada. And she says, modern scientists are proud of their knowledge because they are discovering new methods to dominate the laws of material nature. They think that this is the advancement of human civilization. The more they can dominate the material laws, the more advanced they think they are. Dhruva Maharaj's propensity in the beginning was like that. He wanted to dominate this material world in a greater position than Lord Brahma. As soon as he saw the Supreme Personality of Godhead face to face, he immediately became conscious of the unimportance of his demand from the Lord to have an exalted position better than Lord Brahma's. That's it from my side. I think now we have to uh, have announcements here. Any other things to share? Okay. Thank you very much. Krantra Srimad Bhagavatam ki. Jagat Guru Srila Prabhupada ki. Nitai Gaur Premanande Hari Hari.